Welcome back. In this video, we're going to use the fundamental trig identities. We're going to review some of the identities from chapter 4. We're also going to simplify trigonometric expressions. We're going to factor some trig expressions and we're going to rewrite trig expressions. So our first objective here is to review our trig identities. We should all be familiar with our, our reciprocal identities and our quotient identities with tangent and cotangent. And hopefully we all remember our cofunction identities. Things such as the cosine of an angle equals the sine of its complement and vice versa. And that works for tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant. Don't get too alarmed about the u's here, okay? The u just means or represents u can be any angle. It can be any angle, any real number, or any variable. Or variable. So don't concern yourself too much with that. That's what we've been working with already. Things you want to probably keep handy are your Pythagorean identities if you don't have those memorized yet. Most of us have the standard sine squared theta or u plus cosine squared u equals 1, but the one that involves tangent and secant, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, and 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And you'll see these in their different formats as well, so something to keep an eye on. And then finally, our even and odd identities. Again, we've seen these before. Cosine and its reciprocal are even functions, and sine and tangent and its reciprocals are odd functions or odd identities. So let's go ahead and start by simplifying our first trig expression here. So we have sine of x times cosine squared x minus sine of x. We can simplify this by factoring out sine of x. So if we factor out sine of x, we get cosine squared x minus 1. And I'll factor out the negative 1, so I get the opposite of sine of x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. And then 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. So I have the opposite of sine of x times sine squared x. That's from our Pythagorean identity. Multiplying those back together, we get the opposite of sine cubed x. Sine times sine squared is sine cubed. So we have simplified that expression. Sample 2, I've got the sine of t plus the cotangent of t times the cosine of t. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite cotangent of t as cosine over sine. So cosine of t over sine of t times cosine t. Well, I see here I've got two cosine t's in the numerator, so that's going to be cosine squared t over sine of t. Just bring my sine of t down. Now if I'd like to add these, I'd need, I just need a common denominator. So I'll get my common denominator. I'll multiply this by sine t over sine t. And now I have sine squared t plus cosine squared t all over my common denominator of sine of t. And of course, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is 1. So I have 1 over the sine of t. And using our reciprocal functions, that is the cosecant of t. So our final answer here, simplified version, is cosecant t. We can also factor. So in our objective 3, we are doing some factoring. 
So I have secant squared theta minus 1. Well, this is a can be factored into a difference of two squares. So there are two perfect squares, leaving me with secant theta and secant theta are my two factors of the secant squared theta and difference of two squares pattern minus one plus one and I have factored that. Sample four, we want to factor this one. Now you could do substitution here. Some of you guys might like to do that. We've done that in the past. So we could substitute and do like a u substitution. I'm not going to do that. This one looks like it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to factor. 4 tangent squared, I've got a couple options for that. That could be uh, 2 tangent and 2 tangent or 4 tangent and 1 tangent. Uh, with this 3 here though, the only options for that are 3 and 1. Um, I'm going to start with 4 tangent and tangent of theta. And then factors of negative 3, I only have options for 3 and 1. They have to add up to positive 1 here. So to put the 3 over here on, in our fourth spot or on the far right doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So we'll put 3 here and 1 here. 1 times 3 is 3. Now 1's going to have to be positive and 1's going to have to be negative. So if I do minus 3 and plus 1, when I foil back, sure enough, I'll get a positive tangent theta here. So using kind of our guess and check method as opposed to factoring by grouping. Uh, this does foil back, so I have minus 3 tangent theta plus 4 tangent theta. She smiles to give me back positive tangent of theta, so I've correctly factored that one. In sample 5, we have cosecant squared x minus cotangent x minus 3. Now I don't have the same trig function here, and I, I do need the same trig function if I'm going to, to factor that cosecant squared x is equivalent to, if we go back to our trig identities, is 1 plus cotangent squared x. If we look back in our, earlier in our notes, we see that these are equivalent from our Pythagorean identity. We can substitute cotangent squared x plus 1 for our cosecant squared x minus cotangent x minus 3. Combine my, my 1 and my 3 and that gives me cotangent squared x minus cotangent x minus 2. And now I can factor. So factors of cotangent squared are going to just be cotangent x and cotangent of x. And factors of 2, uh, it's prime, so my only options are 1 and 2 and they need to add to negative 1. So minus 2 and plus 1, we have successfully factored. And then finally, objective 4, we want to rewrite this trig expression. We want to rewrite it so it's not in fraction form. From our Pythagorean identity, we know cosine squared x uh, equals 1 minus sine squared x. Well, why is that important? because if we multiply this by the conjugate, our denominator becomes one minus sine squared x. So let me show you how that works. So we have one over one plus sine of x, and we'll multiply by one minus sine of x over one minus sine of x. So our denominator here, we have conjugates or difference of squares, leaving me with 1 minus sine of x in the numerator all over 1 minus sine squared x. Well, 1 minus sine squared x is cosine squared x, so I have 1 minus sine of x all over cosine squared x. Well, I still have fractions here. It doesn't seem like I'm making much progress. But if I split this over a common denominator of cosine squared x, I end up with sine x over cosine squared x here. Well, 
1 over cosine squared x using our reciprocal functions is secant squared x. I can split sine x over cosine squared x to sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x, right? If I multiplied that together, I'd be back to cosine squared x in my denominator. Carrying my secant squared x down, minus sine over cosine is tangent. So we get tangent of x, and 1 over cosine of x is secant x. And we don't want to factor the secant out. We want to leave it all multiplied together. And now we have rewritten that original question without any fractions. And we'll get more practice on these when I see you in class.